Hey everyone, it's Colin here at eTrailer. And today we're gonna to take a look at the Buyers Products six and a quarter inch amber strobe warning light. And this is gonna be a beacon style strobe light. You can see it gives off a nice bright strobe that's going to just alert people around you, whether you're on the construction site, road work, maybe even a mining situation. Just gonna notify people that you are currently pulled off the road and working so they know to kind of steer clear, make sure they avoid any confrontation or any accidents. Now this is gonna be a halogen strobe light. You can see it gives off two bright flashes every second or so. It's also gonna be a permanent mount. So you're gonna to need to either mount it to the roof of your vehicle with the included hardware, or if you don't wanna permanently mount it or drill into the rooftop of your vehicle, you can go the route like what we're doing. We have the buyer's cab guard, and then we also have the buyer's beacon light bracket right here attached to it. So we can get it mounted right here and then hardwired to our vehicle. Now this is gonna be a very durable light. It's gonna serve your needs very well. It's got a nice plastic housing to it. It's gonna be very robust to provide you a lot of years of service. The included hardware provides us with great connection points along with our base. One thing I do wanna point out, it's not my favorite thing. You can kinda of hear that chirping noise that comes every time the bulb lights up. That's not necessarily a warning sound. It's just something the halogen bulb does every time it lights up. It may bother you, it may not. I just wanted to let you know. We're also going to have six and a quarter inches on our height, as well as six and a quarter inches on our diameter at the base as well. When working with customers, they often ask, is this gonna be compliant with this regulation or this regulation? So just to give you a heads up, it is gonna be SAE J845 class two certified. So that should let you know if that's going to serve your needs or not. If it does meet those certifications, then this is gonna be a perfect solution for you. Now with this being a permanent mount, it is gonna be best suited for those vehicles that are full-time work vehicles that you're gonna be constantly using it for work. If you're looking for something for more occasional use, there are other options available. We have some here on our website that have magnetic mounts, just hooks up to your 12 volt outlet so you can just stick it on your roof while you're on the job. When you're done, you head at home or you're gonna drive around for the weekend, you can remove it and then store it in your truck. This is gonna be a two wire setup. So all we need is a ground and a power wire run up to our light, generally from a switch inside the vehicle. Let's take a look at that process now. Now to begin your install, you do wanna pick a spot that you wanna mount it, whether it's on the cab of your vehicle. In our case, we're gonna mount it to the beacon light bracket that's attached to our cab rack. Now, we're just gonna feed our wire because it's coming out of the center of our light. We'll feed it through that center hole. And then we're gonna have those three different bolts. So we're going to line those up, the three slots on the outsides. And then we'll just take the included hardware right here and drop them through our light and through the slots of our bracket. And now the only piece of hardware we're gonna be using that does not come in our kit is a large flat washer. And that's just simply because we have a long slot right here just to provide a better connection point. So we'll just slide that washer up and then our lock washer and then the nuts. And I'm just gonna use my hands, to tighten it all the way down as far as I can get it. Then I'll repeat this for the other two bolts as well. Now once you have all three of them as tight as you can get them with your hands, I'm just gonna grab a Phillips head screwdriver for the top and then an L eight millimeter socket for the bottom so we can tighten it down. Doesn't have to be over tightened. You just make get it pretty snug and you'll be good to go. When you're done, just give it a good shake. You see that the entire rack is moving, so we can move on. Now when it comes time to wire up your light, like we talked about, it's gonna be a two wire system. We got our power, our red cord, and we're also gonna have our black, which is our ground. We're just gonna get it hooked up to our existing switch that's in the cab of our pickup. 
if you don't have an existing switch, it's probably gonna be the easiest way to go about it. You can pick one of those up here at eTrailer. We got plenty of options. Now these are gonna come pre-stripped. They did leave a little too much of exposed wire from my liking, so I'm just gonna go ahead and snip a little bit of it off. Off for both of them. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and twist them up, make them real nice and tight. And then with one at a time, start with our power. Grab our heat strong bud connector, feed that through. And then we'll just take a pair of crimps. Don't be afraid to really squeeze down on it. I like to, once I get a hold of it, take my other hand and get two hands on the handle, just really get it a good squeeze. Now to ensure you've crimped down on it tight, just go ahead and give it a tug. See, it's not coming off, so we can move on and do the same thing for our ground. Now we're going to connect it to the wires from our switch. Be sure to disconnect any power so you don't have any shorts. We're just going to take our ground first. We've already twisted it up nice and tight, so we'll just feed that into our butt connector. Take the crimp. Again, don't be afraid to use two hands so you can get a nice crimping on our wire. Again, just give it a nice tug, you see it's good. Repeat this for the power wire. Now you do want to confirm that you got good connections on both of them. From there, we're just gonna grab our heat gun and we're just gonna shrink those down. Now once we have this completed, we'll just go ahead and tidy up our wiring. Now what I like to do is just get some wire loom over my exposed wires right here. First I'm gonna start by wrapping some electrical tape around our wire right there. Now I'll just let that hang for a second. I'm gonna grab my wire loom and get it around my wire. I'm gonna bring it up to where my tape is. I'm gonna feed the split point between, or get the tape into this split point right there, and then continue to wrap. Once you got a good seal, just rip off the tape. And then I'm gonna continue to feed that wire through the loom all the way until I get to my butt connectors. From there, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim the loom. Go back to my electrical tape, and then I'm just going to use electrical tape the rest of the way over my butt connectors, and then go all the way to where my electrical tape is wrapped around the wires from my switch. Now from here, now that we've got everything wired up, we can go ahead and go to our switch and give it some power and make sure that everything is working properly. Now with everything working properly, we can stay in compliance with any job requirements or local laws. Well, that's gonna do it for our look at the buyer's six and a quarter inch amber strobe warning light.